Hello everyone and welcome to this webinar on how to keep warm in winter. My name is Marta and I'm a project manager at Students Organising for Sustainability. A so, bit of a welcome first. Um, SOSUK are a charity that was created in 2019 in response to climate emergency and ecological crisis. We're part of the NUS family that has been the forefront of social change since 922. We work to move sustainability from being a niche subject that relatively few study to something that all students learn about and can relate to, because we believe that all students should be sustainability students. We want to create a cohort after cohort of positive solution driven students who go on to make the world a more sustainable place. And we want to shift society from an obsession with short term profit to long term benefit. So we want to do this by getting more students leading on and learning about sustainability, embedding sustainability in formal education from early years to adult learning and making sustainability more inclusive so that it is for everyone. This webinar is part of our, our Homes Fit for City campaign, um, which is a project that was launched in summer 2021 um, and focuses on helping students reduce their exposure to energy poverty. We deliver it in partnership with National Energy Action and it's funded by the Energy Industry Voluntary Redress Scheme managed by the Energy Saving Trust. It builds on some of the work and research that we delivered through our Saves to project um, in previous years. So via their Homes for City project, we're supporting students to adopt energy saving habits through a behaviour change and awareness raising campaign. We want to um, support them to implement low or no cost energy efficiency measures, improve the thermal control, comfort and understand the heating systems, learn to understand energy bills and tariffs, including switching advice and support in particular for those already struggling with their bills, um, and to seek out energy efficient proxies and properties and appliances. So um, in the past, over the past seven years, NUS and SRCK have carried out research to understand the experience of students renting. Um, and from that research, we know that 43% of students have turned their heating off, even though they would have liked it on because of concerns about energy costs. Over half said that their accommodation was much or a bit colder than they would have liked over the winter, and almost half had felt uncomfortably cold in their accommodation. 42% struggle at least from time to time to pay their energy bills. And those who reported feeling uncomfortably cold were more likely to say that paying bills would struggle. There was also a lot of experience with damp and mold in student housing, and all of that had um, negative effects on student mental health. Now we want to reiterate that living in substandard and cold accommodation should not be seen as rite of passage for students, but it often is for a variety of reasons. So students are likely to be inexperienced energy users. Um, for example, they don't know their rights as tenants, they're unsure of energy costs and budgeting, or don't have experience of programming heating, managing bills and communicating with landlords. They often live in shared households. Um, so there's shared responsibilities between people that, um, for example, have different ability to pay the bills because their income varies. There's also high demand for student housing. So there's a lot of competition for affordable housing. Cost of rent is often the main factor in deciding on the property um, and students get rushed into contracts early without knowing what they're fully signing for. Um, and the current rise in prices may lead to even more students to be called in their accommodation. And we at SOSUK believe that that should not be the case. So hopefully you'll find this webinar helpful to help yourself, keep yourself warm for the remainder of this winter and the ones to come. So the first part of the webinar is some keeping warm tips for your home. Number one, first and foremost tip is to get your note to know your heating system. Where is the thermostat or the boiler? How do you set it? Does it have a timer? If you don't know the answer to these questions, it's really time to find out. Familiar with cell with them use a manual for the boiler. If your house doesn't have one, uh, I'm sure you can look it up online and the search engine will world will return it to you. Um, this will should also help you find out about any potential faults in the system, um, hopefully ahead of the cold season or as soon as you can. Um, but yeah, the very base of being able to use your heating system effectively is actually knowing how it works. So the next tips um, are around your boiler and thermostat. 
So we recommend that you set the thermostat between 18 to 21 degrees, um, depending on where it is in the house as well. The best temperature for rooms varies in between the different rooms. Um, so a bedroom, for example, that's just a bedroom, not a study, needs a lower temperature than a living room or a study. The bathroom is best slightly warmer than, um, than the living room. But generally, um, thermostats are situated either on staircases or in common areas. So usually the temperature between 18 to 21 degrees um, is best. It's best to set a thermostat to a temperature that falls within those boundaries. And it's worth remembering that every degree warmer than this can increase your energy usage by 10%. Key point as well, remember that turning the thermostat up won't heat your house up faster so the only thing that turning the thermostat does um, is changing the top temperature um, to which the boiler heats your house so essentially if you come back home and it's cold um, turning the thermostat up won't actually heat it faster so the radiators heat up at the same um, speed regardless of what the thermostat temperature is so keep it such a suitable temperature um, and just adjust when the heating comes on. Second tip from this category is to don't not keep the heating on 24 seven, um, program it to switch off when you're out of the house. So if, for example, um, if you don't work from home, if you go to university or work in the morning and come back in the afternoon, um, just um, make sure that's not working when you're away. So you're not heating the air that you're not actually using. Um, at the same time, when you're already tucked up in bed, there's no point um, in having the heating on, especially because um, the best sleep um, is when the room temperature is around 18 degrees. Um, so it's best to set it so that it turns on about half an hour before you get up in the morning and then about half an hour before um, you get home. Um, this way you will keep the house warm when it needs to be and won't pay for the heat that you're not using. Um, the heating also doesn't have to be on constantly um, for the water to be kept warm in the boiler because the water tanks are generally pretty well insulated and will keep the water hot all day without needing to be constantly reheated. The next tip um, is about your curtains and using your curtains effectively. Um, so windows typically account for around 10% of a house's heat loss, um, but it can be higher, particularly old and draughty windows, which can be the case in student housing, unfortunately. Um, so the curtains can serve as a good tool to keep your house warmer. Um, and some tips to use them best will be to open them in the morning to let the sun in during the day, or when outside is warmer than the inside of your home. Close it when it gets dark um, so that you create a layer of insulating air between the windows and the inside of your home. Um, the best curtains for this purpose would be heavier thermal ones, um, or you could also make or buy additional lining to touch the curtains that you already have. Um, and look out for the gaps in curtains, make sure that no cold air can seep through um, in between the two curtains or on the side. Another important thing is to make your radiators work for you. So make sure that they actually work properly. Um, they might have some air trapped inside them, which would prevent them from heating up all around. Um, a solution to that is bleeding the radiators. But if you aren't comfortable or if you don't know how to do that yourself, um, or if um, you're not quite sure how your boiler works, and it might have to be repressurized after the radiators get bled, get in touch with a landlord or agent. Um, and they should uh, either come to your house themselves or send someone um, to, to do that for you. Um, another one is to keep the radiators clear. Um, it might be tempting to have a sofa right by the radiator and sit, sit on it and, um, in a nice warm den, but furniture or other items in front of the radiators block the heat from getting around the room. So if you move the furniture away, the room will heat up much faster. And um, if you happen to have radiators on external walls, um, it's uh, worth putting radiator reflectors on them. So those are panels um, that you put at the back of the radiator that um, reflect the heat um, that gets put into the outside wall back into the room. Um, so they're only really effective behind radiators on external walls, not internal ones. Um, 
So if you, if you, for example, live in a terrace property um, and the room on the other side is also heated, um, it doesn't make sense to, to put them in inside because um, the heat doesn't escape. Um, so yeah, the heat always travels from um, a warm place to a cold place. So as long as the room on the other side um, of the wall that your radiator's on is a heated room and not an empty one, um, this um, doesn't need to be a solution. Another tip is to draft proof your home um, where possible, of course. Um, it's always limited when you rent a house. Um, so um, some advice over the windows is um, if there are gaps in the ceiling around the windows, ask the landlord or agency to reseal them. Um, request installation of um, drop proofing strips to the windows um, or get the all clear for putting those up yourself um, if you're a DOI kind of person. You can also put up window insulation film um, over the windows in winter. Just remember that um, the film goes over the whole window frame. Um, so you won't be able to open the window without removing the film. So make sure to choose the windows wisely. Um, so don't put it around the windows that need to be opened. Tips for doors um, would be to put draught snakes at the bottom drawshy doors um, to the outside. Um, substitute with rolled up blankets or towels. Um, again, request insulation of um, draw proofing strips and door sweeps to the doors, keyhole covers and a draw excluder to the letterbox. Or again, if you're a DRI person, you can do that yourself. Just make sure that you get um, an all clear from your landlord or your agency. Um, and close rooms, uh, doors to rooms that you don't heat or rooms where you're leaving the window open. So, um, And the same um, goes for the staircases. So close the doors to the hallway of the staircase, um, especially the downstairs because heat rises. Um, you can also hand blankets over exterior doors or um, to close off the staircase um, as this closes off natural air passageways. So they can't act as essentially chimneys, allowing warm air to escape up through the house. Furniture around um, to harness the worm. Um, one, um, it's good to be strategic, especially in winter. Avoid cold air hitting you from windows, doors or external walls. So anywhere that you're sitting or working, um, it's best if that's near a sunny window um, to take in the sun's worm. Um, warmth. Keeping your sitting furniture away from draughty windows and doors is also an important um, reminder. And then make sure again that nothing's blocking the radiators and that they actually um, work to the most of their abilities. Also, if you can, spend time upstairs, again, because hot air rises. So if you have the option, um, maybe move your working space or the area that you use as your common room to the upper levels of the property. Um, if you live in a house that has more than one level um, and if there is space for you to move your common areas to. It's worth being smart about um, how you use the kitchen and the bathroom. So um, using the oven and stove for cooking is a really good thing to do as they both generate heat and especially the oven. Um, after you bake or roast something, um, it's also good to leave the door open so that the residual heat can dissipate around the, ki the kitchen and heat the room. Also get rid of the excess moisture in the air. Um, Moist air is harder to heat than dry air and many student properties in the private rental sector are prone to damp and condensation issues, issues as they are. Um, so to prevent those, make sure that um, when you cook, you put lids on your pots and pans. This will also make um, the water boil more quickly. Use the extract extractor fans um, during and after showering or cooking and crack the window open for 15 to 30 minutes after showering or cooking. Um, of course, be logical about it. So if the rain is pouring down, it would rain the house, don't do this. Um, and remember to close the window after. So if you potentially know that you're prone to forgetting to close the window, um, just close the room so that if you do forget about the window, um, the only room that loses the heat um, is the kitchen or the bathroom and not uh, the house in general. Um, dry your laundry in a suitable manner. That's another tip. So again, don't put it on radiators. Don't block those radiators. 
um, as much as the clothing item might dry quickly, again, the whole room won't heat up as much as it could if the radiator was clear. And dehumidify the air. Um, that's again for the same reason. Moist air is harder to heat than dry air. Um, and your clothes will actually take longer to dry in a humid environment than a dry one. Um, so if you have one, if you have space, um, it's worth looking at resource zero waste websites to get a dehumidifier. Um, as people often want to get rid of things for very little or no money. Um, if you already have a dehumidifier, it's best to put all the laundry in one room, run the dehumidifier and close the door um, so that the dehumidifier really only works um, on keeping that room cooler. Another tip is to rug up. So if you happen to live in a house which isn't almost fully carpeted, which is quite unlikely in the UK, but it could happen, or if you have, if you live in a flat, um, and you can feel the floor getting the cold in, for example, from the cellar, um, it's a good idea to get a rug for it. So it will be warmer to the touch than base floors are, bare floors are, um, and especially if it's a fluffy rug, it can add a layer of insulation to the floor um, by trapping the air between, um, between the carpet. Um, it can also cover any cracks in the flooring that led to draughts in. And it's the same as with the humidifier, look secondhand first um, before you decide to purchase a rug. Um, just remember that big rugs aren't suitable for all rooms. So for example, a bathroom is a no-no. Um, they can't be properly dried or cleaned in there and would be a magnet for germs and mold. Um, and we definitely like to avoid that. The next section of um, this webinar would be about keeping warm tips for yourself. So we spoke about the house. Now we'll talk about what we can do personally. Um, just to clarify um, that first and foremost, the focus should be on building condition, not personal habits. When it comes to keeping warm at home, um, that being said, personal habits are still important. So if it's winter, don't expect to be comfortably warm walking around just in your underwear and nothing else but then on the other hand you shouldn't have to wear for example outdoor clothes or four layers um, at home to feel warm um, it really should be on the building first and you second so the first tip is about how layers are your friend they really are they give you an extra amount of air trapped between your clothes and um, that insulates from the temperature of the room and you can always take a layer off if it starts feeling too warm. Um, so we don't recommend less breathable fabrics in the summer, but they're really great in the colder months. So think um, stuff like thick, thick cotton, wool or fleece um, are really good at keeping warm. Start with the thinnest layers first and keep adding heavy ones until you feel warm. So this in practice, this could, for example, be a vest, then a shirt, finally a jumper, a cardigan. Um, for trousers, you could go with flannel lining or um, potentially wear tights underneath your trousers, especially if they're like loose. Um, and make sure that you keep your torso warm um, as this is where your most vital organs are and your body prioritizes blood circulation there. So if your torso is cold, everywhere else will also be. Um, and if your torso is warm, um, you'll maintain blood flow to your limbs and can often um, make sure that um, your arms, legs, hands and feet are also warm. Keep your feet warm. Um, the warmth of our feet really, really affects um, how warm we feel overall. Um, both feet and hands have a large surface area and a lot of blood cells. Um, and also because the feet are at the end of our limbs and don't consist of a lot of muscle, they're prone to cooling much faster um, than other parts of our body. So first tip is to wear socks. It's a very simple thing that really makes a difference. They don't necessarily need to be really thick. Sometimes just a layer of fabric is all you need. Um, and make sure to change the socks when they get sweaty. Layer up your feet. So this could mean putting a second pair of socks on. So possibly a thin layer first and then like a thick or fuzzy um, pair of socks next. Wearing slippers or um, just a pair of comfortable shoes that you've reserved for wearing around the house. Or you can just cover your feet with a blanket depending on what the circumstances. Um, if you're sitting down for a prolonged period of time, um, you can rest your feet on a heating pad or a hot water bottle. 
Um, you can actually make a basic heating pad yourself as well by sewing dried beans inside a piece of 100% cotton fabric. Um, and you can then microwave it in 30 second increments until it's at your desired temperature. Also, warm feet and hands really do help you sleep better. So make sure your feet aren't really cold when you get in bed or you'll have a hard time falling asleep. The next tip is to eat and drink warming things. Um, so it's best to work on two fronts when it comes to warming your body. Clothes and blankets work from the outside and what you consume can warm it from the inside. So um, choose some warm, hearty meals such as porridge, soups, stews, bakes, roasts, curries, chilies, any kind of like one pot dishes that you boil um, or, or cook for a simmer for a long time. Um, and that's even better when you make them yourself and use that residual heat from the kitchen at the same time. Make sure that you drink plenty of tea, coffee, hot cocoa, your other favorite warm beverages. A hot mug is additionally perfect as a hand warmer. And actually caffeine has also been shown to increase your core body temperature, um, helping to warm you from the inside. So coffee um, is quite a good idea in winter. Um, spice up your food um, and use this warming spices. So for example, ginger, chili and um, turmeric, they have um, chemicals in them that directly induce um, thermogenesis. So that's the process by which cells convert energy into heat. And make sure to eat complex carbs, protein rich meals um, as they take longer to digest. Avoid alcohol. Um, when you consume alcohol, it might feel like it's warming you up from the inside, but that is actually just not the case. Um, vasoconstriction, so making blood vessels narrower is one of our body's key defenses against the cold. Um, but alcohol um, does the exact opposite, opposite. So it dilates our blood vessels and makes the blood rush around your body faster, um, and which makes it easier for the heat to leave your body. Um, so even though you might feel a bit warmer for a bit, you will actually make yourself even colder. So stick to non-alcoholic drinks to warm up. Move your body. And I know everyone hates to hear this, but movements generates um, body heat and boosts blood circulation. Um, just avoid the point, getting to the point of sweating unless you have a plan to exercise anyway. Um, because sweat is there for our bodies to lose the heat um, and will make you colder. But any sort of movement is really good um, for keeping warm. So avoid sitting still for long periods. And when you do, make sure that you put your feet up um, as it's the coldest nearest the ground. Move around at least once an hour. You can set a timer to remind you to stand up, for example, or go and make yourself a cup of tea um, or just walk around the room. Um, or again, you can just move by walking up and down the stairs a few times, walking and dancing around the house um, or maybe doing some quick tidying. You can also do some like exercise or stretches or go for a short walk, um, especially if you go outside on return to the inside, you'll definitely feel warmer. Next is to heat up your bed. Um, no one wants to be cold when trying to fall asleep, and that's especially if you've just had a warming shower. Um, but at the same time, the healthiest temperature for the room for sleeping is around 18 degrees, as I've mentioned before, um, and that could feel a bit chilly when you're just wearing your pajamas. So the compromise is really of all this time um, and that's a hot water bottle with a wool or fleece cover under the covers about half an hour before you go to sleep. Um, for a more modern spin of that you can use a heating pad or a safe electric blanket um, and just to reiterate it has to be a safe blanket and also never use an electric blanket and hot water bottle together. Um, there's a lot of students that don't fit, this, uh, fit the stereotype of a typical student. So like an able-bodied 20 or under with parental support without caring responsibilities or the need of fully supporting themselves finally. Um, and we'd like to really acknowledge this at SOS UK. Um, and we really want to support all students to live in the best home possible. So um, this um, is specifically a piece of advice perhaps for mature students. Um, who might have caring responsibilities or, um, or a different financial situation to someone who's just finished school. 
Um, if you receive certain benefits, you may be eligible for financial support, such as cold weather payments, winter fuel payments, or the affordable warm scheme grants. Um, make sure that you find out more about those on the uh, government.uk website. Um, check out the resources on Enfield Poverty Coalition's website if you need help relating to, to fuel poverty. Um, but also if you're struggling to pay your bills and that's a tip for everyone, make sure to always get in touch with your energy company or the uni or the SU. Um, the Student Advice Centre will be able to advise you um, on what to do in that situation and your energy supplier must take into account your circumstances and help you um, so that you don't get um, cut off from heat. And finally, just a few tips um, to make sure that the next home and that you live in is a warm one. So before you sign a contract, um, check the EPC, so the Energy Performance Certificate of the property um, that you're looking at. The closest rating to A, the better. And the lowest um, a rental property can um, have at the moment is um, grade E. Um, you can actually view the EPC of any rental property online. There is a search for it. Um, when you come for a viewing, ask about insulation. Is there, for example, double, double glazing for the windows? What about the roof and the walls? Um, insulation makes home more energy efficient and it's therefore easier and cheaper to heat um, when you actually live in it. Um, look out for signs of damp. So that's smell, mold and condensation. As a damp property is hard to heat, um, because again, moist air is harder to heat than, um, than dry one, and it can have a significant impact on your well-being and health. Um, and as part of that, please check the cellar when you go to the viewing, ask where it is, go downstairs, um, check whether it has an insulated ceiling, um, and if it's damp or not, as a damp cellar will make the room above it significantly colder. Um, also, another tip is to run your hand around doors and window frames um, during viewings to feel for any drops. Thank you very much for joining the webinar. Um, I hope you find it helpful. Um, and if you have any questions or would like to keep in touch with us, you can email us at hello at sysuk.org, visit our website or our social media for more tips um, about keeping warm in winter and um, saving energy, being more energy efficient um, for a more stable future. Thank you.